I was just like you, wanting to enjoy the thrill of melting your opponent's teeth with sheer brute force. But sometimes, reality just kicks you in the face and you realize it's for your own good. And that reality is, sometimes you just gotta play it safe. So by the end of this video, not only will you learn the fundamentals of a tank team, but you'll also understand why it's one of the safest team you can possibly play. Essentially, you will walk out of this more knowledgeable about this playstyle and getting Apex rank or sneaking your way into point war 18 will no longer look like a pipe dream. Okay, so tank teams are called tank teams because that's exactly what they do, right? They sustain a large amount of damage and are still alive and kicking. This playstyle is simply so safe that it almost feels as if nothing could ever go wrong. Like, have you ever sent a tank before? Even in GTA? You know that feeling where you feel invincible even though you're sustaining heavy fire? Yeah. That's exactly what it feels like playing this star. And so, it is a no-brainer that this playstyle is characterized by its safety. They have an overall good matchups, very high win rate, and generally they are good for your heart, if you have heart problems. So like, if you're scared to hit that play button because you don't want to lose ranks in RTA or in point war, knowing how to play this style and having the aspers to play this style makes it very reassuring. Now boop that like button so I don't have heart problems. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. You also don't need insane gear to play this style, so like, you don't need crazy speed nor absurd DPS gear to make this style work. The whole point of this playstyle is to draft so safe that unless you suck, you can't lose. Which brings me to my next point. It is pretty difficult to cleave this style since cleave thrives off quick matches and this style intentionally drags the game on so it punishes aggressive drafts. The safe opening picks of a tank down draft makes it very difficult to figure out what aspers to bring in to correctly cleave into them. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the downside to this playstyle. The most obvious one is you often have very, and I mean very slow games, which often leads to some very bland gameplay. And it can be one of those matches where, you know, if you're streaming to your friends, tell them to grab a pillow because it's going to be a snooze fest. Now while this style doesn't require you to have insane gear, it does require you to have some pretty specific aspers in your hero pool to pull this draft off like Jin Yu Yao, Sally, Everett, Meredith, Elliot, Hai, just to name a few, right? But these are the common culprits of this draft and they are kind of a must-have to pull off this playstyle successfully. Huh? Another overlooked aspect about the tank down game is that because tank down matches tend to last a lot longer and goes all the way to late frenzy, frenzy meaning you know your healing efficacy goes down to zero and your damage is boosted, you're required to have a much stronger game sense and decision making capabilities. Things like when to hold your skills for a lap around, Knowing where your opponent is on the AP bar or when to rip that S3 to clutch a match is all vital to pull the strategy off. So because you're taking more turns, that means you need to make more decisions, right? And which means that you need to have a much higher skill cap compared to other playstyles, especially Cleave since they just unga bunga the S3 and you know, hopefully they kill you. Okay, if we dissect this playstyle even further, this playstyle thrives on taking the best supports in the game as we speak. But note that some of these supporters are also the most annoying and infuriating debuffers in the game like Jin Yu Yao and Tricky. Usually you'll see this playstyle early pick aspers with a lot of offensive and defensive utility which means that as long as you pick the correct counter DPS on pick 4-5, your supports will carry the entire game. You'll notice this the more you play with or against this comp, like Jin Yu Yao for example. She's a cleanser for your entire team and her S1 is a stun. Sally is a damage mitigator, cleanser, attack buffer, and she is just, you know, generally walls off a lot of aggression just by picking her. Then you have Tricky, who strips buffs and punish cleansers with his passive. His S1 transfers whatever pesky debuff that isn't an immobilization back to you, right? Another common pick is like Ahmed, where his S1 heals and gives a golden attack buff called Supporting Song, which makes your attacks all the more deadly in a prolonged fight. And his S3 is a skill cooldown for your entire team which makes you cycle through your rotations faster. Then we move on to the desired DPS in this playstyle. Generally speaking, this playstyle's DPS choice is very open-ended because they will pick DPS with the sole purpose of knowing which DPS counters your entire playstyle, right? So for example, if you pick too many AoEs, then Everett will be picked into you. Draft one too many Infernos, 
then Leora will ruin your entire career. If you decide to go down the rabbit hole of crowd controlling everyone on my team, including my mom, well, Hyde will teach you eternal solitude. Then you decide you want a fair fight. You know, good old one-on-one -on -one tank bro. Well, Loyan says no. I think I've made my point painstakingly clear. Now, because this playstyle is entirely open to your own interpretation and comfortability, because, you know, every account is different, you should always experiment with what you should ban. As a general rule of thumb, any esper that looks to speed up the game's tempo is your arch enemy and you should ruthlessly ban it in RTA. And because everyone will have a different experience playing RTA, the whole point about banning specific espers for you is to make sure the game doesn't end in one turn, doesn't end in two turns, doesn't end in three turns, but the game ends when you decide to end it. For some, that would be banning a Brewster, some may be Ashley, some may be Nua, or even banning a Meredith. And that's the entire point of the ban. You just want to stall the game as long as you can to make full use of your Esper's unfair kit in the late game. And to get a better sense of what I'm talking about, let's look at a couple of games and let's see it in action. So as we can see from this, my opponent first picked Ollie, which typically indicates to me that he wants to go fast and aggressive. So to assert dominance, I picked Sally first on purpose to tell my opponent basically, hey, if you want to cleave me, you gotta go through Sally. Then I followed up with a Jin Yu Yao to deter my opponent from picking any kind of CC Esper. He then picked Gaius and Lucas, showing no signs of stepping on the break. So in pick 3-4, I chose Cecilia and Everett. Cecilia cleanses and buys me a second life if things goes wrong, and Everett just punishes Gaius for simply entering God Kick mode. He then goes on to pick Pritz and Unis, showing me that he's planning to go down a more control route, so it's an easy last pick high to counter that. So basically, the plan was very simple. In order to make sure I don't get awfully left, and to make sure my height gets to move, I bend Lucas away since I do want Pritzker to extend Everett's skill to become tankier, and I picked Cecilia's 40% HP lead. At this point, it is all about just letting him kill himself through avatar procs from Hyde and counterattacks from Everett as you can see from the replay. Now, here's an example of what I mean that you need to ban a unit that would speed up the tempo of the game. As you can see from the draft, because he last picked Nua to counter JJ, it tells me that he was banning Sally. Shout out to Eskimo for good drafting. Since JJ was my damage dealer and damage mitigator, I was forced to ban Nua and let Brewster through. Well, funny story. It was on this day that I learned that Brewster was a fucking menace. Okay, so this is is a perfect example of how tanks want to play, right? Tricky was banned because he was the only Esper that would speed up the tempo of the game just through his passive, which severely hurts Jin Yu Yao and Sally, making them very vulnerable to the slew of bruises picked by Eski. Now, Elliot was picked here because he's an amazing tempo dictator by simply never allowing Meredith to use any of her skills, and his taunts will just shut down Everett from ever counter-attacking. And so, Eski's Jin Yu Yao was ticked down by my Tricky's passive, and by the time Late Frenzy hits, coupled with Sally's attack buff, every Esper on my team started hitting like a truck. So at the end of the day, whether you're a tank player or not, I would highly recommend that you pay attention and learn this playstyle through and through, because players will tend to trend towards tanking down at the end of any PvP event due to its safety. And if you're still finding trouble trying to understand what playstyle is all about, then I would highly suggest you watch this video where I talk about how you can find your playstyle, because that is the very first step you must take in order to start improving since every account is built different.